Hi everyone! Today's video is a bit different. We are here in Lavaux Vineyard, or more precisely in Le Parrain Vineyard in Lavaux, doing Vendage, which is the famous grape picking that I already talked about. This video is going to be a bit different because I'll show you around the vineyards, show you how the process of Swiss wine making happens, and also do a little interview with Jean-Luc, who is the owner of this vineyard. Welcome everybody, my name is Jean-Luc Ducré. We are there in Chardon. Chardon is part of the Lavo. It's a small region of the Lavo. The Lavo represents about 800 hectares, one yard, which is a part of the UNESCO. What we say in, in this part is that we are quite lucky about the wine, wine yard, the wine production, because everybody said that we have three suns. We have the direct sun, you know, which is coming there, which is good about the degrees to the sun. To the exposure because if you are flat and the sun is coming like that it's not the same as if you have an inclination and the sun is coming at 90 degrees we name it the first sun the second sun is the lake because the lake is acting as a mirror and is reflecting as well and give light as well to this one yard and the third sun this is the all the world that's we have as you can see there is a lot of stone everywhere and during the day all those stone uh, accumulate heat and they redistribute that heat during the night. So this is why we are in a kind of privileged area for the production of the wine. And why is it part of UNESCO heritage? Because it's a bit special with all those walls and the situation there, it's a bit unique. Actually, historically, nobody wanted those, those fields because for the, for the farmers, the early stage of the 15th century, there was no interest. It was difficult to, to grow go with this very difficult land. So they gave that field to the, the church people and the church people, they made all those construction, all those walls to get wine for the church. So all the church, which are on the middle part of the Switzerland, you know, Fribourg, Bern, Zurich, they were using the wine produced from that region. And then later on, of course, then it came a bit, it came to private people producing wine. But this region is known to be uh, it's supposed to be known to be the best region to produce wine in Switzerland. Today is obviously the Vandage. How would you explain what is Vandage? It's mean grapes picking, you know, for the people, but it's mean as well uh, happiness because you bring the result of one year into, you, into your cellar. I feel the, the Vandage, you know, as such, should stay a bit festing. There should be no rush. We should have a nice lunch, we should have a drink, and, you know. This particular vineyard, you are the only owner. How did you start this little business or little hobby? This vineyard was owned by my godfather and he didn't have any children. And historically, the people from that region, they had a little bit of vineyard and a farmer. And they used to produce wine to feed the people coming to cut the grass for the cow, there was no machine at that time. So this wine yard, historically, was always to our family. And we were not making wine. And my, my godfather gave me that piece of land nearly 40 years ago. And I said, okay, I'm going to start not to sell the grape because we were producing it, but I'm going to make the wine. And we do everything up to the bottling. You know, I'm in a kind of philosophy where uh, I'm not doing it for business. It's an hobby, but which she's done like, I think, a real, real professional way. I'm the first one in the region to start from very old historical plant to try to reduce the chemical because I don't care about having less fruit. I don't want to use systemic product, for instance. Systemic product is the product which penetrates the skin, penetrates the leaf, and you have that inside the blood of, and so you have that inside the fruit. 
so I don't want that in my wine yet. What types of wine do you make? In 2007, we had the ale, and this winery was totally destroyed. So I said, okay, this is the time to change the type of grape. So as I said, I think earlier, I went to very old varieties. So I produced Sauvignon, this is Sauvignon. And where you can see, I don't know if you see, this is Cabernet, or it's part of the family of Cabernet, actually. Not a uh, Cabernet like his Poyos in Bordeaux, it's much, much older variety, which is resistant to the illness. Poyos a bit less, but we don't have to worry and to, to spray as much. How much wine do you make every year? On we, we make about 3,000 bottles and we are a bit lucky because we don't have any problem to market it. So I think we will double that next year because we are buying some more land. And how do you normally sell your wine? Well, up to now, just by people speaking to oh, people. Word of mouth. Yeah, exactly. One of my sons just created a website, so I start to have a bit of order uh, through that website as well. In Switzerland, do many people do winemaking as a hobby? As a hobby to go up to the end, you know, to do the production, etc. Very rare. I think I'm maybe <laughs> the only one. one. <laughs> as historically, People had a bit of wine, a bit, a bit of uh, lamb, you know, from farmers, etc. They used to keep that in the family. So they used to keep those small wine yard, but they always sell the fruit. You can see my neighbor, they have the, the grape, which are there. And the grape will go to a wine producer that is buying the grape. Because to make the wine, it's a job. It doesn't come just like that. You really have to work on that. You really need to study and etc. I know in Switzerland you make a lot of wine, but a lot of it is drank in Switzerland and pretty much nothing is exported. How come? This part, it, it, it's more of a political problem. At the end of the Second World War, Switzerland had a problem of feeding the people. So they said we have to protect our country. So they protected for the, for the potatoes, they protected for the barley, the wheat and whatever. And they did the same for the wine. So it was not possible to import white wine. So the people producing white wine, it was so easy for them to sell it. They made no marketing effort to sell it or to try to sell it somewhere else than Switzerland. And it's only lately that due to the common market, we had to open the, the barrier from the custom. And now we have the big competition. And now they start to have difficulties to selling the wine because they are not used to, to do it. Do you think the Swiss wine is really, really good? How does it compare to other wines? <laughs> it's the best, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, the quality of the Swiss wine has grown a lot in the last 10, 15 years. Really a lot. For me, there is nowhere where there is not good wine. Everywhere I saw fantastic wine. I would say in Switzerland, we have a good specialty on the white wine. Very often when I go to bring a bottle of white wine to a friend in France or in Italy, they are very surprised. They said, oh, I like it, I like it. But they don't know it. They have no way to buy it in the shop. So definitely there could be a market. For the red, a lot of effort has been made. I feel for the red, we should choose maybe a uh, speak generally speaking not about what i'm doing but uh, maybe we should increase the way we choose the varieties compared to the land and the exposure we have So this is the end of Vendage at Le Parrain Vineyards. The grapes are still pressing, but we're pretty much finished. We're going to go into the warmth now and have some raclette. Have a nice day wherever you are and see you in the next video next week. Bye.